In digital signal processing, most of the systems and signals that we manipulate are represented by complex numbers. In this lecture, I will review the basics of complex numbers and how we manipulate them. Complex numbers are typically represented in two ways, Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. In Cartesian coordinates, we represent a complex number z as an ordered pair with a real part and an imaginary part. The letter j equals the square root of negative 1, and it is attached to the imaginary part in Cartesian coordinates. In conventional notation, we say that x is the real part of z, and that the imaginary part of z is y. In polar coordinates, we represent a complex number as a magnitude and an angle or phase. In conventional notation, r is the magnitude of z, and theta is the phase. We can switch between these notations by using basic trigonometry. We can calculate r by using the Cartesian distance from the origin to the tip of the arrow. We can then calculate theta by using the tangent function that relates the angle to x and y. Remember, the tangent is the opposite of the angle over the adjacent side. Now that we have the tangent, we use the arctangent function to complete the calculation. Euler's relation tells us that e to the j theta can be converted into Cartesian coordinates. If we multiply both sides by r, then we can easily find a way to express x and y in terms of r and theta. Now that we know how to represent complex numbers, we need to review how to add, subtract, and multiply these numbers together. Adding two complex numbers together is very similar to adding two equations together in normal algebra. We will treat j as a variable and x and y as constants. To add two complex numbers together, we must add the real parts together and then add the imaginary parts together. Multiplication of two complex numbers and Cartesian coordinates can be completed by using the FOIL method. We multiply the first terms together, then add that to the outer terms, then add those to the inner terms, and add those to the last terms. Remember that j squared is equal to negative 1. Finally, we must reorganize the variables to put the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. Multiplying two complex numbers in polar notation is much easier. We can multiply the two r values together, and then we add the exponents together. Finally, we must discuss the concept of complex conjugates. A complex conjugate of a complex number z is denoted by z star. Remember that z is represented as x plus jy. The complex conjugate will have the same real part as z, but have a negated imaginary part. 
In polar coordinates, we negate the phase of z to create the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate has some handy computational properties. For example, z times z star simplifies to r squared. z plus z star simplifies to 2x.